Let's say that you'd like to prepare an asset to be used within LOPS. Here we have this barrel, and what I can do is I can use this match size node, and that's going to perfectly situate this barrel on the origin. Now, if I go here to this justify Y, and I say min, that will allow the barrel to be above, well, everything in the positive Y direction, and, uh, and now our barrel is what we want it to be. Also, if I middle mouse, we have the barrel group, we have lids, and middle scraps. And these are all primitive groups, which means that someone went through and highlighted the faces and made groups from them. Now that we have this, let's create a null and call this barrels out. Now, let's create a new lop net. So we'll say lop network. Also, you can go up here and say stage. That'll also bring you to a lop net. But I like doing this, so we'll do that. Sop import, and let's go find that barrel. So, barrels out. Okay, so the first option we have here is load as reference. And this is already kind of a confusing concept. Before I talk about that though, let's change this layout to something that works better for Solaris. So go up here and choose Solaris. So as I was saying, what does this load as reference actually mean? Well, if we look at the tooltip, it says this. When this is on, the geo will be imported as a payload. When this is off, the geo will be imported by sublayering its hierarchy over the existing scene tree. So what the heck does that mean? Well, from my understanding, for all practical purposes, if you have an asset and you're bringing this asset in, you want to say load as reference. When we check this, we have all of these other options available to us. And probably the most important one is, this primi is the primitive path right here. So if let's say on this primitive path, I want to specify where exactly it lives on the scene graph tree over here, I could say something like this. Let's create a barrel transform right and then do another forward slash and say that this is our barrel one and now if we look over at our scene graph tree you can see that by typing this in it's now created an area that allows us to have this barrel one now check this out if i make and let's just name this node barrel one for right now let's make barrel two now and we can merge this in What's cool is that by having this option right here of specifying the primitive path, this lets us place the barrel anywhere we want to inside the scene graph tree, which for a small scene like this might not be a big deal, but it is a big deal when you have large scenes and you want to specify exactly where this barrel is going to live within the scene graph tree. So now let's say, this is barrel transform, and now forward slash barrel two. And now if we go to this merge, as you can see, we have the transform right here, another transform which represents the name barrel one, and then the actual mesh. For those of you who are comfortable with Maya, this is kind of like having your transform and then finding your shape node underneath that. It's kind of a similar concept. If you're not from Maya, then don't worry about what that means. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of this reference. It's a way of just appending this object to your actual scene graph tree. Now, what about unchecking this? So if you don't have load as reference, why would you do that? So, you know, what would be a situation where that makes sense? If we go to the help docs, we have this section called sublayers and references. And sublayering is essentially a situation where let's say you have an entire department. Like let's say that we are importing all the lights that the light department made for a particular shot. Well, that is when you would perhaps uncheck this load as reference because we are trying to compose different versions of an entire scene. And the reason why there might be this 
I guess, uh, distinguished difference between as a reference versus as not is because this plays a role specifically in opinion strength. Again, that's the ability for departments to override what other departments are doing. So, the long story short of it is that if you say Loda's reference, you're bringing in an asset. I should also mention that this was a very important note about referencing. Referencing is the only way to load the same layer file more than once at different locations. So, what that means is that if you say Loda's reference, you're just bringing in something. It's not uh, perhaps a, a final department decision on what that barrel should be. It's just bringing it into your scene. People, multiple people can reference something at once. So if let's say somebody in modeling ever changes this barrel, now that barrel will get updated when that person changes it because all you're doing is you're pointing at the barrel at whatever its you know published version is. Okay, so <laughs> that's this Loda's reference. And to make things a bit more confusing, that's not the same thing in Houdini as, let's say, creating packed geometry. That is going to be down here, I believe, with this make instanceable. That is, I believe, the same thing as actually creating a reference to geometry that's on disk, aka a packed primitive. And uh, once you check that, then you're not able to modify the actual contents. It's just a reference to something in memory. Okay, if you're not terribly confused yet, um, don't worry. Just the main takeaway is say load as reference whenever you bring a prop in and most of the time that should be good if you're the person who has to assemble the final version of a scene then that might be when you don't check this because you're bringing in the final say for entire departments okay now that we have that let's uh, move on because uh, we spent a lot of time already talking about that I'm now going to jump down to this thing called layer save path and what this is saying is where would you like to store or write out this USD information on disk? I mean, eventually, if you go to create a USD file, you want to specify where to save this information. So you could say, let's say our hip location, forward slash tutorial one, forward slash geo barrel base dot USD. And so when you go to, let's say, use a ROP, a USD ROP, now for this particular section of the USD hierarchy of this information, it's going to save it in that location. So this keeps track of where to save this. If you're at a studio, I imagine a pipeline TD might automatically set this to where in the server this actual model USD information should live. Okay, there's that. Now, if we go down here to this cog wheel, we have this thing called kind. And what the heck is kind? Well, kind is talking about what kind of thing is, let's say, this barrel transform. And I know that's confusing because it's like, well, it's a transform. But in USD, they have different rules depending on what kind of kind <laughs> you have specified for this thing. So for instance, if I have a component, I cannot include a group within a component. Anything that comes after a component, like let's say this, I tried to make this mesh zero a group, it wouldn't work because groups are not allowed to be a component. So the kind, and, and the reason why this exists is because there are various rules within USD which apply to specific kinds of kinds. Yeah, see that's, that's what I'm talking about with this, this wordy business. <laughs> if you go to the LOPS and USD glossary, which you can find in the help docs, if you type in kind, this gives you an idea 
of how that hierarchy kind of works. So at the very top, we might have, let's say, the entire kitchen. And, you know, this is confusing model kind. Like, why model? What is that talking about? Ignore that for a second. Just know that we have a kitchen. Because the kind is an assembly, that means we can contain other assemblies. We can, we can have groups in there, components. As you go down the rabbit hole, though, so as you now have a group, you can now only create other groups in there and components. Now that you have a component, the only thing you can have is a subcomponent. And then once you finally get down to the subcomponent, that is, let's say, the lowest level that does not allow any other sort of children to happen afterwards. So that might be an example of the chair is a component of the dining table which exists within the kitchen, and the very specific cushion on that chair is the lowest level that you can ever reach. As you can see here, we have different drawing modes that you can set depending on what kind of kind it is. And yeah, that's, again, this is all kind of just uh, pipeline stuff. It's hyper organization at work, essentially. Now, one last thing that I will mention, because this is very confusing, is what is this whole model thing talking about? Because at Pixar, when talking about USD, model does not necessarily mean model, like geometry, like, you know, a model in 3D. Model describes what kind of kind a kind is. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, I'm not making this up. So this model, what that means in English is that we have these different kinds, which are like little, like, you know, assemblies, groups. We have these words that describe certain things. And, you know, like the top kitchen here, this is, a, this is an assembly. The model is saying, which, which group do you, or like, which kind is this? Like the kind itself is a model. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain that. The, the, the way that this is worded makes it almost impossible to explain, which is difficult. So we have assembly, right? This assembly is essentially th this concept of an assembly. The fact that we have an assembly, which is just, you know, a larger... Uh, collection of stuff like in a in a kitchen like in a kitchen, right? The fact that we've organized this into an assembly means that we have a model for understanding what an assembly is. Perhaps that's the best way that I can describe it. In general, if you're not a pipeline TD, you don't have to really worry about what this model term means. So when you run across that, just know that it's that's what they're trying to talk about. Maybe another way of saying this is that in USD, an assembly is a kind of model. And kind, it, it, this, this kind is not talking about this kind. It's talking about a, a, an assembly is a, a sort of, or is a um, example of a model. Maybe, okay, that's a better way of putting it. An assembly is an example of what a model is. Gosh. See, that's why this stuff is, is difficult. Anyway, I want to move on because I'm spending too much time on this, but uh, there you go. In the next lesson, let's take this down a notch and just continue on with the barrel.